Hi there, it's Nicole for Simon Says Stamp with some rainbow strips pattern paper background for this super cute little village using components from the Simon Says Stamp February 2018 card kit. This kit is called A Colorful Crafty Life and it is just fantastic for crafters and sending cards to all of your crafting friends. Lots and lots of great ways to use this card. I decided to use several of these strips of pattern paper from the kit, kind of in rainbow order, um, as far as, as close to rainbow as I could get using the papers, the Echo Park papers from the kit. This is from the I'd Rather Be Crafting 6x6 paper pad. About an inch and a half up from the bottom of, a, of the white cardstock piece, this is some of the white cardstock from the kit, I used a T-square ruler to draw a straight line. And that is so I can use these Simon Says Stamp exclusive village dies. These are actually several years old. They're one of my favorite dies from Simon Says Stamp. Lots of great ways to use them. One of my favorite things is that they are not, don't have a die line along the bottom. So they are great for making a border. And what I wanna do is die or trim rather a bunch of strips varying widths of pattern paper from the kit and create my own striped background and have this bright white village border popped up along the bottom of the card using greetings from the crafty friend stamp set included in the kit. So I'm going to start with my border first and I'm going to die cut part of the border and then I'll come back and do like the about the second um half or the last third, I guess, of this border. The pencil line really just helps me line up all of these little trees and houses so I make sure and get everything close to being straight in line because what I'm gonna do is it only die cuts the, the shape, either the tree or the house. I'm gonna need to take a craft knife and trim along that pencil line in between each of these houses. It's really super easy. I'll show you how to do that to create this amazing border. And you could create borders. What I like is you can completely customize it. You could do a more portrait style card. You could do only do one or two houses in a tree. There are just a bunch of different ways to use them. So I'm just taking a ruler and a craft knife and just creating little lines. Now, when I first cut this, I really didn't cut it right. I cut it too high and it looked kind of funny. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out, but I'm gonna go back and uh, use my craft knife again. I left this in because I wanted to show you that it's a really easy mistake to fix. In fact, I had two of them making this card and I left them both in because I think it's good to show how uh, with a little perseverance, you can usually rectify many, many little errors. So there I popped it out and I did go ahead and erase my pencil line, but you could see the die cut line down into that border, which really kind of ruins the effect of the border. So I'm gonna scoop my ruler just a little bit and we're gonna go back. And I'm sorry, I kept getting my head in the way. And luckily I have a hair appointment this week to get rid of those grays. So sorry about that guys. Um, just trimming a tiny bit, maybe an eighth of an inch, if even that. And very, very carefully with my craft knife because you don't want to cut off any of those little trees, those little um, tree, those little trees are really teeny tiny. So I'm carefully just popping each of those out with my craft knife. And this looks so much better. It gives the tree trunks a lot more room, really gets rid of um, any of those little lines, those die lines that might've been down in this border. Now this border is gonna be where my greeting goes. I'm going to be using one of the greetings from the Crafty Friend stamp set. And I will pop out all of those little windows and things here in a little bit as well. Might clean up that end just a tiny bit. So there is my border. Next, 
I'm going to go ahead and grab my Tonic Studios paper trimmer and a bunch of the papers from the kit. And what is fantastic is I've already used some of these papers for some other cards. So it's a great way to use up paper and you still have tons left. This is a bunch of little teeny tiny thin strips and I did not measure any of them. I just simply cut a whole bunch and then I will go to putting together my own custom rainbow striped background. It is one of my favorite techniques and it's something so easy to do. Grab just a couple more here. I have kind of a, a light pink, a darker pink, orange, yellow, a green, and kind of a turquoise. So those are the colors I'm using for my rainbow. With a piece of stick it adhesive, and this was a scrap I had, and it doesn't have to go all the way to the very bottom, simply because that border is going to be along the bottom, and you're going to see that I'm not really going to line up any of my strips. I just need them long enough so that my border hides them. So I'm just pressing that stick it in place and it looks like I maybe missed a little area too but I don't think that's going to mess up my background at all. So I've peeled those off and what I found to be really easy is there are some nice cutting lines. There's the 45 degree angle line on my cutting mat and it was great to line up that first strip with that line. And from there, I'm gonna simply work my way out. So I worked my way down to that bottom right corner, and then I'm going to come back and go up to the top left corner. And these I did start kind of long before I realized I really don't have to use up all that paper. And if I don't make my, um, don't go all the way to the bottom of this sheet, I will have some little excess strips when I trim these off that I can use to maybe fill in that upper left corner, which is what I did. So instead of cutting a whole bunch of extra strips, I really tried to utilize all of these little parts and pieces. If you have a bunch of little strips or leftover pattern paper or cardstock pieces, I love building my own backgrounds, by creating stripes and things like this with those little pieces that maybe aren't good for anything else. The stick it adhesive makes it great. You could also use a tape runner if you wanted to or other adhesives, but I love the stick it because it can cover the entire sheet or the entire background. So you are ensured that your strips are going to be adhered all the way and they're not going to go anywhere. So I went ahead and filled in the rest of that and trimmed off all the excess. There is what my stripe background looks like. I like the diagonal, I think it's nice and forgiving, but you could definitely do a vertical stripe or a horizontal stripe, whatever you like. I'm gonna use the Spellbinders Tool-in-One to pop out all the little window pieces. They die cut, they're just so teeny tiny that they like to kind of stick in there. So I'm just simply popping those all out very, very quickly. You could also roll it over using the foam pad underneath and they would pop out as well. I just like that little um, pointy end that works great. Now here is my second mistake of the card. I really should have stamped my sentiment before adding my foam adhesive squares. And I got all the way to adding the little foam squares to all the little buildings in the trees before I realized I had done it and I did not wanna to try to pull them all off because pulling them off would probably ruin the foam squares and I did not wanna waste them. And um, I just figured I would go ahead and try to stamp the sentiment on the front and the worst thing that could happen is I ruined it and I would have to die cut and stamp and put foam adhesive squares on another one. But I decided to just go ahead and see if I could make this work. Luckily, it worked perfectly and that you'll see that here in just a little bit. So I went ahead and pulled all my foam tape off. I even stuck it to the bottom of my stripe background. I was really banking on it was going to turn out okay. And I'm gonna line up the You Make Everything Colorful greeting kind of down in the 
lower right corner. I decided instead of centering it because I am gonna be adding a speech bubble or a little talk bubble and a greeting up high, kind of up in the upper left, that I thought it balanced it out nice having it shifted over to the right. I also am masking off parts of the greeting and stamping the top line with VersaFine black ink and then the word colorful with Simon Says Stamp, Spring Rain, and Orange Peel inks. I like the look of the two-tone greeting and I think it really ties in to the sentiment, to the rainbow background. I was really trying to pull some of that color from the upper part, the background of the card, that, that stripe we created, down to the bottom edge because it's so bright white. This is a very clean and simple kind of card. And I think the addition of color in the sentiment really ties everything together nicely. I clean the stamp after I stamp each color, mask off the next area, ink it up, and then go ahead and press that down. So here is the You Make Everything Colorful and I decided to use the little heart from the Crafty Friend stamp set at the very end. It's why I left a little bit of room there. And I'm going to stamp the heart with some teeny bikini Simon Says Stamp ink right there at the end. Again, that's pulling just another color from up above down to the bottom part of the card and really tying it together. Plus I'm going to use the dashed line stamp from the Crafty Friend stamp set. Now it gave me a little bit of trouble. It did not want to stand up straight. I did eventually get it to kind of go straight along this edge, but I definitely don't want it to go through the you make everything part of the sentiment. That would really kind of ruin that part of the sentiment. So I'm going to get this lined up and I really had to mess with it. It did not want to stay. And I don't know why I used this pencil, this did not work. But I'm just gonna hold it up there for a minute and I realized my pencil was way too thick. I don't know what I was thinking. And I'm going to just go ahead and line that up again. And I finally got it to stay, so yay, pick that up. Mask off the you make everything part of the sentiment. And that will make sure that the ink does not go across the greeting. This is the Sunshine ink from Simon Says Stamp that I'm stamping right there. Go ahead and peel off my mask. And there is my perfect little dashed line with the colorful sentiment. So next we're gonna take one of the nested talk bubbles. These are a newer product from Simon Says Stamp and they come in tons of fantastic sizes. Um, this is the second to smallest size of the talk bubbles. There is everything from the super huge to a really teeny tiny. This one worked great because it really fit the Hello Crafty Friend greeting from the stamp set. I'm gonna center that, stamp that with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And the Thought Bubble die cut from white cardstock, again, ties in to the white of the village border. I wanted everything on the card to be very, very white, except the stripe background. That is the focal point that really ties into the greeting. It plays off of the greeting and works perfectly. I popped up the Talk Bubble with some foam adhesive squares. And next, I am going to take the Simon Says Stamp Craft Tacky Glue included in the kit with the Studia Kacha uh, Cupid's Kiss Crystals. And these are all in shades of clear and pink. There's some pink translucent, pink opaque. I'm gonna use um, just an assortment of them throughout my card design. They add a fun little embellishment, some nice texture, and little pops of very, very subtle color to some of the white areas and just some nice dimension to others. Now the Craft Tacky glue goes on white, but I have noticed as it dries, you will not see the white underneath any of these translucent little rhinestone pieces. 
Instead, you'll see whatever color they were laid over. So if it's over white, it's just gonna be clear. If it's over one of the pattern papers, you're gonna see that pattern paper through it. It's a great sticky glue. It adheres these little gems perfectly. I am using a jewel picker to pick them up and put them in place. They're so teeny tiny that I find a quick stick tool or a jewel picker is the best way to adhere any of these little gemstones, sequins, anything like that to my projects. I'll finish with just a couple more here before I take a side fold card base and I'm going to stamp the little phrase on the back from the Crafty Friends stamp set that reads handmade by and it has the little line there. Then I'm going to adhere my card front to that card base and my card is all finished. So there is the front of the card and then the customized stamp on the back. I'll go ahead and just write my name there. I love that it can be customized by whoever has handmade the project. Thanks for joining me today for this card featuring the Simon Says Stamp February 2018 card kit, A Colorful Crafty Life. Please visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.